Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So, I, I decided this was a pretty good way to start off the video because I just was just running Slumbering City and I found a legendary. Thought I'd try to catch him on video. Ooh, first try, there we go. There we go, boys and girls. Alright, so... Um, you might have noticed that my face is like super, super bright and it feels like there's light coming from this side. And that is... Pretty much exactly it. I, like the lights are completely off in my room, and the only light is like this lamp, and my monitor is like, just shining light on my face. Um, I call this the hyperbolic time chamber mode. It's basically when I when I go hardcore and I farm and I'm sliming, I just uh, turn off all the lights, and then like I have my back hunched like this with like one hand on my mouse, you know, sliming away. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 when I go really really hardcore. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's, 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 uh, I think that that's kind of relevant because what we're going to be talking today is we're going to be talking about farming. We're going to be talking about farming efficiency. Um, not really too much because I don't really have any math right here, but I kind of just wanted to show off my teams and show you guys how they're gemmed and stuff. So as I showed just now, this is my Star Sanctuary team. Um, because I was, I was waiting for the Anu, I think the time went down by a little bit. And the reason why I was farming Star Sanctuary was because there was a double XP or double gold event. Now, efficiency wise, it's always best to farm on the gold stage on a double double XP or gold event because um, this way you're actually like whatever gold bonus that you're that the the thing is giving you, um, you basically get that you basically get your original gain from farming plus the extra gold that you get. So it's actually really, really nice because gold is a really important resource. And I would say it's probably the most important because it basically, gold is convertible into astrogens. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out my how to infinitely farm astrogens video. Um, so yeah, that, I think I think that was my normal um, normal farming team. I'll show the gems of all these units after, after the runs. I, I kind of wanted to show that. I can kind of probably show one more run of that. Um, this is basically what I use to farm any stage before Star, Shan Star Sanctuary because they're able to pretty much almost one-shot anything. I think they kind of might have trouble on one of the units on one of these stages with just the Snowy uh, doing, his, doing her AoE. But on any stage before Star Sanctuary, she can pretty much... Uh, you know, one shot the whole entire wave but as soon as she gets her bar up to full. So usually I average around like 40 seconds per run or so um, on any stage before Star Sanctuary. And on Star, Star Sanctuary it's usually like 40 something seconds per run as well so it's definitely not too bad. Especially with these two on Siphon they can basically just clear the whole entire wave. So I kind of want to show the the team I use to to uh, do st do any stage before Star Sanctuary. I kind of wanted to show a special team for Slumbering City, as well as my um, my team for Golems and stuff. All right, so that was 46 seconds. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, I basically use that team before for any stage before Slumbering City. I've recently been testing out some teams for Sky Falls, but it actually hasn't been that much better than Slumbering City. It averages around a, a minute and 40 um, with me trying to use like, actually I've tried many teams for this stage. I, I tried using this team, but then a lot of times like she, the one of the Monas would die and then the runs would actually take longer. Or I could use like, you know, two C stars or something like that or two Mihos. It still averages around one minute 40. So it's not, it's not actually all that good. Um, but I do farm this stage a lot. I farm the Slumbering City Gold stage quite a lot, and I, I will be showing the gems to all my units after the after the runs. Um, but I think this is mainly what I use for for farming the stage, and this is the main map that I farm on. This is what I use to make gold, make gems, make um, dragon sigils, and all that stuff. I mainly only farm Slumbering City for the dragon sigils. It's kind of the only thing that I care care about because I want better siphoning gems, I want better leech gems. Um, the leech gems for Golden Speed 10, the siphoning gems for... for... actually for everything. Like, siphoning is just so good, so... That's really all I can say. All 
Alright, this looks like a decent run. Alright, usually, yeah, once they get their AoEs up, um, the whole team starts spamming their AoE and just basically kills everything. And then a lot of times, you know, by by we, by the time we enter the next wave, um, you know, at least one or two units have their AoEs up. And as, as long as one unit has their AoE up, um, it will generate enough reds or blue souls that then on the next turn, all my other, like maybe one or two units on the um, on, on my team also has their AoE up. So, so then they'll spam it again. So it's definitely not too bad. And like this, I was able to get um, a minute and 30 seconds. I think my average runs on these are like a minute and 40 seconds. So it's definitely not too bad. And then I basically just, um, you know, I get some gold. I get to sell this gem for some gold. And if you guys didn't know, like ruined gems actually sell for more. Like it's the most expensive type of gem that you can sell. Um, if you compare this with the, the other gems before, this actually... This, this type of gem actually sells for, for a little bit more than others. So you actually get a little bit, you get the most gold farming Slumbering City on, um, on, on extreme mode on the gold stage. So this is Golem's B10. Actually, I don't really have a real Golem's B10 team. Um, I've been using this team to farm Golem's B10. It was basically three light nukers and this, um, this fire purse. And basically, it's not super stable, but it's about like 95% um, 95 stable. I, this is kind of my new team that I've been using for Golems B10. I don't really farm Golems B10 until, unless I have time to like really watch it. So I don't really mind that it fails sometimes. Um, I really don't think I can really get this team reliable unless I, I uh, you know, take out the Snowy, take out the July and just put in like two other units of a different element that has kind of the same skill set. Ooh, that was bad. The bee didn't die, so we're gonna have to waste one more attack. All right, that looked pretty good. So most of us, yeah, most of my units have a full bar. Um, it was actually unfortunate that the July didn't have a full bar. Or else she would have been able to armor break the golem on first turn. And then I would have been able to do a lot more damage. And then that thing on the side probably wouldn't have wasted um, an extra attack from that July. And this extra attack probably could have killed the golem. So that kind of wasted like another 10 seconds um, time on this run. It's definitely not too bad. I think it averages averages around a minute thirty, so it's not it's not that horrible. Yeah, minute thirty-two, and it still gives me shit. You know, honestly, like with it giving four star gems, I almost feel like I make more than in Slumbering City. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to see my... Um, I don't really farm B9 or B7, because if I need gems, I'll always go to B10. Um, if I need gold, like really, really quick gold, I'll, I'll, I can go back to B8. And B8 is pretty much the same. I just use whatever I use for Star Sanctuary, and I just nuke through the stages really, really fast on B8. Um, I guess that's, there's no real point in me showing the, the team because it's the exact same team. So I'm going to go and show you guys the gems that I have for those units. So this is my Light Vic. Um, her gems are not perfect because although these two are defense siphon gems, um, this one's actually a flat one. But the good thing about this gem is I actually had 20% um, defense substat here. So I decided to just slap this on her and use it. I, I saw the defense substat and I was like, you know, let's let's just try it out. And I, I got some few a few lucky rolls. So I think this is definitely worth using at plus 12. Just basically put that there. And she still has a decent amount of defense. Um, and can pretty much do her job pretty well. The Light Snowy is also on Siphon with attack, HP, um, attack. The 1 HP is mostly to survive in Golem's B10. And I 
think I might be able to go like triple attack if I was just using her for farming. But if I wanted to use a triple attack siphon unit, I might use someone else um, instead. Like a pure attacker, some something that has some sort of like damage boost, although her attack is already pretty high. Um, my Monas don't have any squares, so I can't really use the square gems either, so that's it's kind of too bad. Um, the two Monas are just on broken set. Um, I just put them on triple attack because they, they have no square. And I tried to use gems that had attack substats, although some of them don't. So they don't really have the best gems, but it's not too bad, in my opinion. It's not, it's not like too horrible. I probably, if I wanted a better farming team, I probably should um, put the Light Vix gem on one of my C stars or something, for example. But my C stars don't have the same gem slots as the Light Vix, so I can't really use these gems on them. Um, the other thing I can do is maybe raise another... Actually, wait, no, no, I need the C star for the crit, so yeah, it's not going to work. I kind of need a C star. Um, might just need better siphon gems, other shapes that also have defense. Might actually work better. And as for my Slumbering City team with the Mihos, um, show my Succubus first. She is on attack crit rate HP. Try to boost her crit rate up as high as possible. It's 99%. I think it's high enough. Um, I did skill her up once, but that's all, all I could really skill her up with because I don't really have any other books to use. Yeah, I only have Miho and Kokomaru books. Hopefully, one day I will be able to get her max skilled. I think she'll definitely do. She's going to be a really, really good monster if I just if I can get her max skilled. Um, yeah, I could also use her for PvP, although I don't really need to. I think she she's pretty strong for PvP as well because she does have a little bit of resist. Um, the other units are my Mihos. I have my three Mihos. They're all max skilled, all like max gemmed. And they're all three of them are on crit crit rate double HP. And yeah, I didn't really focus on the substats of these gems, but they have pretty high HP. Like this one almost has like max crit. This one has like 10% to max crit. And um, this one is on ruin with the same set. And this one actually has a little bit of crit. This one doesn't have any crit, although you know I really would like another HP gem that has crit, but can't always get what you want. Maybe I'll try maxing out this one. And this one also has like flat HP, so it could be really nice. And yeah, I basically just use these three for, I use them for farming, also use them for arena, um, for PvP defense. They, they do that pretty well as well. Just leave, leave a defense up like this. It's pretty, it's pretty strong because I do have them like max skilled and stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to make a video um, because someone asked me for my gems on the Slumbering City team. I thought it was a good idea to, sh to kind of show show you guys um, the teams I use for farming and stuff. And yeah, I'm probably just going to go back to grinding like mad. But anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.